Madam President, uh, despite Donald Trump's assertion last May that, quote, our country needs a good shutdown, end quote, the truth is that shutting down the government is a serious and dangerous action that we must do everything possible to prevent. Shutting down the government would impact tens of millions of our fellow Americans who would be unable to access government services. It would severely impact federal employees who would not get the paychecks they expected. It would also have a very significant impact on our armed forces. In other words, we must do everything that we can to prevent a government shutdown, which is exactly what will happen if a budget agreement is not reached by January 19th, when the short-term continuing resolution expires. I am very disappointed, therefore, that the Republican Party, which controls the White House, the U.S. House, and the U.S. Senate, is pushing us closer and closer to a very dangerous government shutdown. The Republican leadership in Congress and the White House must not allow this shutdown to take place. They have got to compromise. They cannot get it all. As everybody knows, in 2011, Congress passed the Budget Control Act. The centerpiece of that bipartisan legislation was that there would be parity, parity in defense and non-defense spending. That agreement continued in the American Taxpayer Relief Act of 2012, the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2013, and the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2015. All of these bills provided equal amounts of funding for defense and non-defense purposes. Any future effort to increase the Budget Control Act caps must continue to adhere to this principle of parity. In other words, we have had a bipartisan agreement now for six years that has continued on four separate budgets. But now, threatening us with a government shutdown, the Republicans want to break that agreement. Madam President, I was very disturbed to hear Senate Majority Leader McConnell on the floor yesterday say that, and I quote, since fiscal year 2013, defense cuts have outpaced domestic spending cuts by $85 billion. To fix this, we need to set aside the arbitrary notion that defense spending be matched equally by new non-defense spending. There is no reason why funding for our national security and our service members should be limited by an arbitrary political formula that bears no relationship to actual need, end of quote. Senator McConnell on the floor yesterday. Madam President, unfortunately, what Senator McConnell said was inaccurate and misleading. His statement conven conveniently ignored the fact that mandatory spending on domestic programs like Medicare have been severely co cut over this time period. He also ignored the fact that during this period, the Defense Department has also received tens and tens of billions of dollars in funding through the Overseas Contingency Operations Funding that is not capped at all. If you include the Overseas Contingency Operations Funding, the reality is that overall defense spending has gone up, not down, over this time period while non-defense discretionary spending has been severely cut.
Further, Sen Senator McConnell ignores a very, very important reality, and that is that non-defense discretionary spending as a percentage of GDP is now at a 40-year low, 40-year low. This long-standing agreement regarding parity for defense and non-defense spending is not some kind of inside-the-beltway esoteric issue. It is an issue that will impact tens of millions of working families in this country who today are struggling to keep their heads above water. Over the last 40 years, while the middle class of our country has been shrinking, the people on top, the top 1%, have been doing phenomenally well. The actions of the Republican Congress in the last year have only made a bad situation, an unfair situation, even worse. In the United States today, some 28 million Americans have no health insurance. Yet, over the last year, the Republicans have attempted to throw an additional 32 million people off of the health care they have, including proposed cuts for Medicaid by up to a trillion dollars over a 10-year period. Madam President, tragically, the United States has the highest rate of childhood poverty of nearly any major country in the industrialized world. And instead of doing all that we can to end childhood poverty in this country, the Republicans have proposed to once again make a horrific situation even worse by cutting nutrition programs for children cutting the WIC program for low-income pregnant women, cutting the Head Start program, after-school programs, and funding for public education. Madam President, there are millions of senior citizens in this country who can barely make it. And I sometimes wonder how, in God's name, they do make it. On 12,000, 13,000, $14,000 a year Social Security. How do you keep your house warm? How do you buy the food you need? How do you buy the prescription drugs you need to stay alive on $13,000 or $14,000 a year? And yet there are millions of senior citizens in this country in that position. And yet despite that reality, over the last year, we have had to fight off one Republican effort after another to cut Social Security COLAs, to raise the retirement age, or to even privatize this life and death program. Further, the Republicans have proposed massive cuts to LIHEAP, the Low Income Heating Energy Assistance Program, which is keeping people warm in Vermont today when the weather goes below zero. All over this country, millions of people, often senior citizens, depend upon this program, yet President Trump in his budget proposed to wipe it out completely. Republican leaders are also proposing cuts to the Meals on Wheels program, senior housing programs, and Medicare. Madam President, today in a highly competitive global economy when we need to have the best educated workforce in the world, when the new jobs that are being created require a higher education, hundreds of thousands of bright young students desperately want to get a college education, but they are unable to do so because their families lack the income. But Republicans, incredibly, want to make that situation even worse by proposing massive cuts in the budget they recently passed to Pell Grants, the major source of funding 
to help low-income young people get a college education and other financial assistance programs for college. In my view, we should be making public colleges and universities tuition free. Republicans today are making it harder, proposing to make it harder for our young people to get the higher education they need. Madam President, during this budget process, when the Republicans want to expand military spending by some $100 billion, $100 billion over the next two years, by far the largest increase in military spending in American history, we will not turn our backs on working families, the elderly, the children, the sick, and the poor. The United States government must do more than greatly expand military spending and give tax breaks to billionaires. Our job is to protect the working families of this country, and that is what the new budget must do. And that means we must have parity between defense and non-defense spending. And that is why this budget the proposed budget that we are working on now must address the many crises facing the working families of the United States. That is what the American people want, and that is what we must deliver. And among many other things that must be included in the new budget that we are working on is full funding for community health centers which provide primary health care, dental care, mental health counseling, and low-cost prescription drugs to some 27 million Americans in every state in our country. It has been more than three months since funding for community health centers has lapsed. Our nation's 1,400 community centers in roughly 10,000 communities throughout this country are deeply worried right now as to when they will get the funding they need. I just spoke to the leadership of community health centers in Vermont the other day, and they have had a long-standing problem as have community centers, all community health centers all across this country in retention and attracting new doctors and nurses into their programs. What we are seeing now is a situation where many people who might want to work at a community health center are saying, why would I want to go there when the Republicans are delaying funding for this vitally important program? If we do not act soon, 70% of community health center funding will be cut and 2,800 health centers will close their doors. Community health centers must be funded at the levels contained in the bipartisan legislation introduced earlier this year, and I congratulate Senator Blunt and Senator Stabenow for their bipartisan work on this issue. And there are a number of other Republicans who are co-sponsoring that legislation. We could pass it tomorrow if it was on the floor of the Senate. Let us do that. The offsets to the prevention program of the Affordable Care Act that were included in the December 21st agreement are unacceptable, and they must not be repeated. The blunt Stabenow bill has nine Republican co-sponsors. This bill represents a modest 5% increase in funding at a cost of just $2 billion over five years, the very least that we can do to address the major crisis of primary health care in America, especially in rural America. Madam President, as you know, federal funding for the Children's Health Insurance Program expired on September 30th, 2017. If the CHIP program is not reauthorized, 9 million children in working families will lose their health insurance. Can you imagine? that we have a Congress prepared and acting to give tax breaks to the richest people in this country 
but somehow or another, they have not gotten around to reauthorize and refund the Children's Health Insurance Program. That must be done immediately and once again without regressive offsets which take money from other health insurance programs. Madam President, we must keep our promises on pensions. If Congress does not act soon, the earned pension benefits of more than one and a half million workers and retirees in multi-employer pension plans could be cut by up to 60 percent. We must not rescind the promise we made to a million and a half workers. Madam President, we must expand Social Security services for seniors. Since 2010, Congress has cut Social Security's operating budget by 16 percent, and Republicans want to cut it another 4 percent this year. These budget cuts have resulted in the loss of more than 10,000 employees, the closing of 64 field offices, and reduced hours in many others. In Vermont, one field office has seen its staffing cut by 30 percent. According to a recent Washington Post article, 10,000 people died in the past year waiting for a decision on Social Security disability benefits. We need to increase funding for these vital services by at least $1.4 billion just to bring staffing back up to where it was in 2010. Madam President, we need to keep our promises to our veterans, the men and women who have put their lives on the line to defend our country. Right now, we have tens of thousands of vacancies in the VA. Those vacancies must be filled. Veterans must be able to get high-quality, timely health care. We must fight the opioid and heroin epidemic that is sweeping this country. We are seeing all over America tens and tens of thousands of people, often young people, overdosing on opioids and heroin. States and communities all over this country need the resources for prevention and treatment. That is an issue that cannot be delayed, has to be dealt with now. Madam President, everybody knows that in the last several months, we have seen disastrous hurricanes impact Texas and Florida and Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. In Puerto Rico today, there continues to be many, many people who still do not have electricity. We must pass disaster relief right now, which is adequate which treats Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands just as we will treat Texas and Florida. We cannot continue to delay, given the enormous suffering that is existing in Puerto Rico and in the Virgin Islands. Madam President, let me very briefly touch on another issue of enormous consequence, which simply cannot be ignored. On September 5th, 2017, President Trump announced that he would be rescinding President Obama's executive order on DACA. That decision means that some 800,000 young people, 800,000 young people who have known the United States of America as their only home, this is where they grew up, this is where they went to school. These 800,000 people are on the verge of losing their legal status in terms of education, in terms of employment, in terms of serving in the military if that program is not reestablished. Without the legal protections afforded by the DACA program, these young people live in constant fear of being deported. Since the President's announcement in September, more than 11,000 people have lost the protections under DACA, with approximately 22,000 
set to lose their legal protections by the March 5, 2018 deadline. Any spending agreement must address the fear and uncertainty unnecessarily caused by the administration's reckless actions, and a Clean Dream Act must be signed into law as part of the budget negotiations. Madam President, protecting the dreamers and moving these young people towards citizenship is not some kind of wild and radical idea. It is precisely what the American people want. A recent Quinnipiac poll showed that 77 percent of the American people support providing legal protections for the dreamers. This is an issue that must be dealt with, and it must be dealt with now. Madam President, when history looks back on this period, I do not want them to see a United States Congress which worked overtime to protect billionaires and large corporations, and a Congress which turned its back on working families and the children and the sick and the poor. I do not want history to look back on this period and say that members of Congress thought it appropriate to spend a hundred billion more on the military, but not be concerned about veterans who do not get the health care that they need, or some 800,000 young people who are now frightened that they will lose their legal status. As the United States Senate, we must get our priorities right, and we need a budget which deals not only with military spending, but with the needs of the middle class and working families of this country. And with that, Madam President, I would yield the floor.